بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹ السلام علیکم ٹوڈے وٹ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈو آئی جسٹ شو یو ان منٹ کلاس نائنتھ سبجیکٹ فزکس ٹاپکس آف ٹوڈیز لیکچرس وی ول ڈسکس ٹوڈے پرابلم فور پوائنٹ ایٹ فور پوائنٹ نائن اینڈ فور پوائنٹ ٹین تھری دیز آر دا تھری problems left and our chapter will numerical of this chapter will be finished these are all or all are on page number 105 so i show you now again this class 9 subject physics topic of today lectures problem 4.8 we will discuss 4.9 and 4.10 these three problems are on page 105 of your ninth class textbook student there is a request from you when you log in with the zoom uh, try to write your real name so that we can take the attendance so make sure you you use your real name thank you now we will start the numerical problem uh, 4.8 the problem number 4.8 this is 4.8 class 9 subject physics page number 105 i read the statement of the numerical first two blocks of two uh, of masses 5 kg and 3 kg are suspended by the two strings as shown in the figure find the tension in e string suppose i attach two uh, boxes or two blocks one one block this is the first block and this is the second block these are attached as shown in this figure so the top box the top block is of weight is weight is mass is 5 kg and the other block has mass 3 kg right you know this is supported with the with a it is attached with an support this is a support so this is a string this is string and the weight of the block is acting downward similarly the weight of the block is acting downward so what is happening this 5 kg uh, block is attached with a support the string is acting is pushing this block upward is carrying this block upward so i take i took t2 is a tension in the in this in this block and similarly 3 kg block is attached downward from 5 kg and it is also attached with the string so tension in this string because this is also acting upward so the arrow shows this is the upward direction so tension in this string is t1 so tension in the upper string is t2 uh, and the tension in the lower string is t1 this is this block is 3 kg mass and this block is 5 kg mass i said this block a the top blo block a is called block a and the bottom block is called block b and you know the weight of the block always the weight always acting downward weight is a force with which the earth attracts the body towards its uh, uh, center so weight is always acting downward direction so that's why the arrow is showing the weight is acting downward the weight of this block is also acting downward in this direction the weight of this block is also acting this in downward direction so i gave you the idea of the fig uh, figure uh, how this he says two blocks of masses 5 kg and 3 kg are suspended by the two strings as shown find the tension each e string we need to find t1 and t2 we need to find the tension in the first string and tension in the upper string so i write the given data mass of the block a this is a block a is mass is i i took it m2 uh, 5 kg and the mass of the block b this is the block b mass its mass is 3 kg i write, wrote the data acceleration due to gravity you know the acceleration due to gravity the value of g is 10 m per second uh, square this is understood value you got to if it is not given in the numerical you got to memorize it by heart 
So this is the data we were we, we, we were given five kilogram and three kilogram. The mass of block A is M two. I I took it M two five kilogram, and the mass of block uh, B is three kilogram. I took it M one is equal to three kilogram, and this is not given to me. I because I will use this in numerical. That's why I'm writing. Uh, acceleration due to the value of acceleration due to gravity is 10 meter per second scale. In this numerical, we are asked to find tension T1, this tension which is carrying upward direction T1 and T2 which is uh, in the upward direction. These two things we are required. As tension in the string, as tension uh, in the string is equal to the weight of the body attached. As this is solution, I am going to start the solution now. As tension these tension uh, tensions are equal to the weight of the body attached weight is acting downward but these tensions are acting upward now the next one is you know uh, tension is a force so i use a formula m1g w is equal to f is equal to w w is equal to t1 and t1 is equal to m1g since it is the first one so m1 is the mass of uh, second three kilogram and g value is 10 so 3 multiplied by 10 is 30 newton similarly t2 tension t2 in the upper portion t2 so this will be equal to the sum of the tension uh, m1 g plus m2 g if we carry the total tension if we add this value of m1 is 3 the value of g is 10 again plus m2 is 5 and g value is 10 so 30 plus 50 is gonna be 80 newton so tension in the 5 kilogram uh, block will be 80 newton uh, 80 newton which is upward acting upward but tension in the lower block which is 3 kilogram is 30 newton so our result will be t1 is equal to 30 newton and t2 equals to 80 newton this is the end of this numerical 4.8 i again i repeat what we discussed uh, in this numerical we were given uh, the data which is two blocks were given uh, i made this figure this this figure is also in your textbook this figure is in your textbook so the two blocks of mass is five kilogram this is five kilogram which is a block a uh, and the three kilogram are suspended by the two strings so this is first string uh, I, I took it as t2 and this is the second one t1 that uh, t1 which is uh, carrying this 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 block is attached with the t1 because why i am saying t1 because tension it is carrying this block upward direction this carrying is both block upward direction the weight of this block and weight of this block that's why i am and when the, when i did when i find the t2 uh, when i find the solution of the t2 i you have observed in the numerical i add m1 g plus m2 g because tension 2 is carrying these two weight together so i wrote the data uh, mass of a block a is m2 and uh, 5 kilogram mass of block b1 is 3 kilogram this is block a this is block a its mass is 5 kilogram and block b this is block b which is 3 kilogram and i didn't know this value but uh, it's not given to me in the numerical but i because i want because the uh, acceleration due to gravity is uh, you must know this by heart so in this numerical we are going to find tension t1 and tension t2 as tension in the string is equal to the weight of the body attached weight of the body attached so t1 t1 tension is a force so f is equal to w w is equal to mg so since i want to i am finding uh, tension in the lower block so three kilogram block so t1 is equal to m1g so m value of m1 is given to me which is three and value of g is acceleration due to gravity is 10 so 10 multiplied by 3 is gonna be 30 newton but tension 2 t2 is the combination of the uh, weight of the lower block and the weight of the upper block so m1g plus m2g i just put the values m1 is 3 and g is 10 
in the next example uh, in the next scenario m2 is 5 and g is 10 so 10 multiplied by 3 is 30 and 5 multiplied by 10 is 50 so 50 plus 30 is 80 newton so my result will be tension in the lower block which is 3 kilogram is 30 newton and tension in the upper block which is carrying 3 kilogram and uh, 5 kilogram weight together so its tension will be 80 newton so this is my end of 4.8 numerical now i'm going to start 4.9 so uh, 4.9 numerical class 9 subject physics page 105 next numerical is 4.9 uh, class 9 subject physics 10 page again on 105 i read the statement of the numerical a nut has been tightened by a force of 200 newton using 10 centimeter long spanner what length of a spanner is required to loosen the same nut with 150 newton force you know uh, we, we we use a spanner to tight or loosen the nut but if we uh, move the spanner in clockwise direction so it will tight our nut but what will happen if we uh, move it anti-clockwise direction it will loosen our nut or uh, nut will be open so this is the procedure a nut has been tightened by a force of 200 newton because we want to spanner length is uh, you know the spanner uh, length of the spanner is 10 centimeter the length of the spanner is 10 centimeter and force uh, is applied 200 newton to tighten the nut long spanner what length of the spanner is required to loosen the nuts so in this example if we want to lose the nut we will have to move this spanner 100 and uh, anti-clockwise direction and our force is given to me 150 newton so given data in this case force to tighten nut f1 i took it as f1 which is given to me 200 newton so length of the spanner l1 i say this is the length of the spanner l1 which is 10 centimeter so you know the unit of length is meter so i converted this uh, into meter by dividing it 100 so 10 divided by 100 is 0 0.1 meter this is the meter is the si unit of the length so we need to convert this uh, into standard unit before solving the numerical so force of the force of force to tighten nut f1 is given to me 200 newton and length of the spanner i said l1 which is 10 centimeter is given to me to so 10 divided by 100 is 0 0.1 which is the which is have which has been converted into meter which is the uh, si unit of the length force to lose a nut is also given to me 150 newton i say this i take it as f2 uh, just in order to distinguish uh, f2 uh, 150 newton in this case we need to find the length of the spanner so what length of the spanner is uh, required to lose the nut so i took it as length of the spanner l2 so again force is given to me to tighten the nut is 200 newton this is 200 newton and length is also given to me 10 centimeter i converted this converted this into meter because the unit of length as a unit of the length is meter force to loosen the nut is also given to me which is uh, 150 newton i say this is f2 which is 150 newton in this numerical what is required length of the spanner uh, to loosen the nut l2 is required no next solution i go to the solution uh, using principle of moments you know when we uh, read the equilibrium condition of the we use the clockwise moment is equal to anti clockwise moment this is the principle of moments when we read the chapter when we study the chapter we discuss this one clockwise moment equals to anti clockwise moment so i say clockwise because uh, when when you tied the nut uh, you apply the force clockwise direction and when you um, loosen the nut you apply the force anti-clockwise direction so this is for uh, loosen the nut 
and this is for clockwise moment is uh, tighter than that so clockwise moment f1 times l1 and f2 times l2 since we want to find out l2 length of the spanner to loosen the nut so that's why i separate this out what i will do f1 multiplied by l1 divided by f2 l2 will be separate out i just put the values f1 is given to me 200 l1 is i just converted this into meter which is 0.1 and f2 is given to me 150 if we 200 multiply by 0.1 if we multiply and divide this 150 with the help of the calculator we will get 0.11 meter this is uh, the standard unit but in answer our answer is in centimeter that's why i am multiplying this with 100 if you multiply with this 100 you will get 13.3 cm which is the length of the spanner required to loosen the nut so our result will be l2 equals to 13.3 cm again same numerical uh, just for your convenience i am going to repeat i'm going to repeat uh not this numerical uh, we have done this this numerical a nut has been tightened by a force of 200 newton using 10 cm long spanner what length what length uh, using 10 cm span long spanner what length of a spanner is required to loosen the same nut with 150 newton force this is 4.9 numerical page number 105 what is given to me force is 200 newton i say this is f1 200 newton length of the spanner is also given me which is 10 cm i converted this into meter because the si unit of the length is meter so why how i will convert this by dividing this 100 so 10 divided by 100 is 0.1 meter force to loosen the nut is also given to me i say this is f2 this is f2 which is 150 newton length of the spanner we are required to loosen the nut so l2 we need to find out so solution 4.9 problem 4.9 using we i use a formula using principle of moment clockwise moment is equal to anti clockwise moment clockwise moment is used to tighten the nut so anti clockwise moment is using to uh, open the nut or loosen the nut right so how will i uh, this is this clockwise moment will rotate the body clockwise direction this will move rotate the body anti clockwise direction clockwise direction is used to uh, tighten the nut anti clockwise direction is using to uh, loosen the nut so f1 multiplied by l1 equals to f2 multiplied by l2 so since i want to find out l2 so length of the spanner required to loosen the nut so i separate this out by dividing this by f2 f1 multiplied by l1 divided by f2 i just plug in the values which i which were which i was given so force f1 is given to me 200 l1 is 0.1 and f2 is 150 if i multiply this and divide 1 by 150 we will get 0. Point, uh, 0.133 meter so since uh, my answer is in centimeter that's why i am multiplying with 100 So 0.133 multiplied by 100 equals to 13.3 centimeter, which is the length of the spanner required to loosen the nut. So my result will be L2 equals to 13.3 centimeter. So this is the end of the numerical 4.9. I move towards last numerical of this chapter, which is 4.10 numerical, uh, class ninth again. Uh, subject physics page one zero five. I read the numerical statement. Uh, you can see on your ninth class textbook this statement, same statement. A block of mass ten kilogram is suspended at a distance of twenty centimeter. Please, uh, students, don't write anything on the screen because it is very irritating for others. So please do not do this. Uh, a block of mass ten kilogram. is suspended at a distance of 20 cm from the center of a uniform bar 1 meter long what force is required 
to balance it at its center of gravity by applying the force at the other end of the bar so this is the length this is the bar of 1 meter long this whole bar this this is where my pointer is pointing this whole bar is of 1 meter till here a to b from from this position to this position this is 1 meter long bar so a block of mass 10 this is a block uh, attached to this uh, this rod so 10 kilogram mass is attached to this rod this is the rod where my pointer is this is the rod so this is the rod uh, one meter long one meter long bar so this on one end say this is a point a where my mass is attached so 10 kilogram mass is attached to a point and this is the wedge uh, which is on which uh, my rod is balanced this rod is balanced on this wedge so this distance is given ac is given to me which is 20 centimeter i showed you now uh, a block of mass 10 kilogram this is the block 10 kilogram is suspended at a distance of 20 centimeter this is from 20 centimeter uh, from from the center of the uniform bar one meter long this is a center and c is a center from here to here the distance is 20 centimeter and other distance is uh, because this is the half of this one so it is if it is a fifth, one meter long so the half will of this will be 50 centimeter so half of this 50 50 so 30 will be here and 20 will be here so 30 plus 20 is 50 so this distance from this distance is 50 but this distance to this distance is 50 because at b point is 50 centimeter apart from center of the wedge so this distance ac's distance is given to me i found this distance because this is half b point is lying half of the center that's why if the rod is one meter long so this distance will be 50 centimeter and you know the weight of the body is acting downward always acting downward so he is saying to at what force this force we need to find this force f force what force is required to balance it at its center of gravity by applying the force at a other end of the bar this is the force which we are required on the other end this is the first end and this is the second end. this force is required in this numerical now what is given to me you know the length of the rod is given to me which is one meter and you know one meter equals to 100 centimeter mass of block is also given to me which is 10 kilogram so how will i find the weight of the block w by using the formula w is equal to mg you know mass of the block is 10 so if you multiply with g value of g is 10 so 10 multiplied by 10 is 100 newton this is the weight of the block this is this this is the mass of the block but you need to convert this into the weight of the block the weight of the block is w w is equal to mg i use this formula to find the weight of the block mass i use the formula 10 10 is the mass and you know the value of g is 10 which is understood so 10 multiplied by 10 is 100 newton i found the weight of the block distance of the block from the center of rod this is also given to me which is which i denoted ac 20 centimeter so 20 divided by 100 is gonna be because i converted this this is the length so length i the unit of length is meter again similarly as i converted in the last numerical i converted the same thing i do the same thing over here so 20 divided by 100 is 0 0.2 meter bc distance of the force from the center of the road this is uh, this is i found because the road length is one meter so half will be 50 centimeters i again i converted this into uh, SI meter unit of uh, length is meter so 50 divided by 100 is 0 0.5 meter in this numerical I, I am required to find force so I use a principle of solution using principle of moment you know I use the same formula which I used in the last numerical clockwise torque is equal to anti-clockwise torque you know F multiplied by BC because this force 
F will rotate the body clockwise direction. So clockwise torque is equal to anti-clockwise torque. So W is acting, W is the weight of the block which is acting downward, which will move the body in anti-clockwise direction. But clockwise torque, the force uh, multiplied by BC because, uh, because that uh, 50 divided by 100 is 0 0.5. So F multiplied by BC, I just put in the values. You know, we found weight 100, W is equal to mg, we found 100. AC is uh, given to me, uh, distance 20 centimeter, I converted this into meter. So 0 0.2 and then BC, since I want to find out the force, I showed you the force. So 0 0.5 divided by this, so 100 multiplied by 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.5, we get 40 Newton. So force is required F, which is 40 Newton. So this is the end of the numeric problem, all problems of chapter number four, 4.10. We discussed all the examples. We discussed uh, all the problems and uh, uh, in this numerical, I repeat this numerical for you again. So I'm using this for numerical again, repeat, I'm using, I'm repeating this numerical for you. 4.10 the student who wouldn't understand please please be focus on this numerical 4.10 a block of mass 10 kilogram is suspended at a distance of 20 centimeter from the center of a uniform bar one meter long you know this bar this from here to here this is a long bar which is one meter long and this is the wedge where the rod is balanced on uh, on the wedge uh, rod is balanced on this rod wedge is balanced on this rod on the one end of the rod the 10 kilogram mass is attached so so you know the weight is always acting downward from this block to the center we, this given is this distance is given to me which is 20 centimeter i wrote 20 centimeter how did i find 50 centimeter you know uh, the length of the rod is one meter so half of uh, one meter is 50 centimeter half of uh, one meter is uh, 50 centimeter so this in this numerical he is asking us what force is required to balance it balance this on this wedge he is asking me to find F force, this force is required. So this force, I'm multiplying F multiply in the numerical I show you next. F multiply by 50 centimeter, then I multiply by 10 multiply by uh, 20 centimeter. Look, clockwise torque, length of the rod one meter, I convert it into weight, 10 multiply by 10 multiply by 10, 100 Newton. So I converted this into meter as well, you know, I converted this into meter as well. Then force is required. I use the formula clockwise torque is equal to anti-clockwise torque. You know F force will rotate the body clockwise direction and this is the moment arm. You know torque formula is F cross L. So L is in this case is BC. I just put the values. So this weight will move the body anti-clockwise direction. So W multiplied by AC which is 0 0.2. I just plug in the values and force is found to be 40 Newton. My result will be force is equal to 40 Newton. Uh, students, I hope you understand all these numericals. If you have any question regarding this, please feel free to ask. Thank you.